I've wanted a YouTube channel pretty much since I was a little kid. I uh, can clearly remember back in the early 2010s, 2011, 2012, pretty much as far back as my memory can go, I've uh, been a fan of watching YouTube. Uh, I would just spend a lot of the day just watching YouTube videos on our old iPad, uh, and obviously that was in the days before YouTube Kids, so the only parental intervention I had was occasionally when I unintentionally went somewhere I shouldn't have, but that was that, so for the most part, I was just free to watch whatever, and logically doing that, I thought, wow, this looks so cool. I want to be a YouTuber too. And I thought that for a long time. So when we fast forward many years later, it's the summer of 2018. I've been doing well in school and my parents figure, you know what? Maybe it's finally time for me to finally get that YouTube channel I've always wanted. So now all I need is a name. And I figured, well, if somebody can be a dog person or a cat person or something like that, why can't I be a train person? And I know that sounds corny and cliche, but that's exactly how I was in 2018. But anyway, I'm a train person was born. I am now a YouTuber, but I had no idea at the time what I would get myself into. The first year or so, there wasn't much to say. I basically just made whatever I felt like making, um, not very much progress. It was just um, whatever came to mind and on a low-quality iPod Touch. So nothing, nothing that big. Uh, and my only audience was just friends from school. That was literally it. So by the time I had been on YouTube for about six months, I had only just reached 10 subscribers. And pretty much all those subscribers were friends from school. So, yeah. Um, in the initial time period from when I first started, I didn't get very far. Though, I did have a few. There were a few parts of my early days that have kind of continued on. One of the biggest being iMovie. Uh, to this day, I make almost every one of my videos using iMovie, and I've used it pretty much since day one. Uh, there was a time when I um, tried out this Clips app. I think it comes default with... I think it came default with my iPod, but um, I tried that out for a little bit. But other than that, for the most part, I used iMovie for nearly the, my entire YouTube life. So iMovie was a thing from back then, and catalog reviews. I would, one of the many videos that I just did off the top of my head was reviewing Lionel catalogs, Lionel and MGH catalogs, and um, obviously that's something I continue to do, and uh, I think that was pretty much my first uh, my first, uh, exposure outside of just friends from school. It was still not very much, but I think that my review of a Lionel catalog was, like, one of my first videos to reach 100 views. So I don't know if it was just a bunch of rewatches or what, but that's, that's getting somewhere. So we get to 2018 and 2019. I'm just another kid making... Low quality Minecraft videos, because I did make Minecraft videos at one time. Uh, yeah, just low quality stuff. Uh, and just making whatever came to mind with very little editing on iMovie. I did that through 2018 and then 2019. And then we get to 2020. And around late night 2019, early 2020... There was one Thomas YouTuber that I was really getting into, because I didn't make Thomas videos back then. Uh, I would just make random Thomas skits uh, back in my early days. Uh, once again, with little to no editing whatsoever. But one Thomas YouTuber that I really got into um, coming to the end of 2019 was a YouTuber by the name of James is here. 
uh, you probably know who he is, but I first started watching his content around that time, and I really got interested in it. I, yeah, I just really liked his content. So when the opportunity came, there was ever a collab or a contest, I was going to be one of the participants. And uh, coming into early 2020, this was pretty much the first time I ever uh, made myself known in the Thomas fandom. Once again, it was on a very, very small scale, but I, it was something just chipping, chipping my way into the, uh, the, the YouTube scene, uh, view by view, still very small progress, but still progress nonetheless. So I take part in James this year's collaborations and then I do collabs for other YouTubers, which, which gets me even more known. But then, uh, as we know, uh, the uh, virus happened in March. Suddenly I found myself with all this time on my hands, uh, being at home. And around, I think, April of 2020, James was here, uploaded a video saying that somebody stole his content. So, logically, me being a big James is here fan, immediately jumped onto the bandwagon, and within an hour, I made this whole protest video rallying up the community, uh, and like, we're gonna take this guy down, and just a big kind of motivational thing. Just something that I kind of did, maybe in the heat of the moment, I don't know. But I just, I made this protest video, it was just a generic iMovie trailer, but I uploaded it to my channel, and this was pretty much my first big video. I think this became one of my most popular videos eventually, and I started getting a lot more attention from it, at least by my standards at the time. I reached a whopping 50 subscribers, yay! And, um, I think the video reached... 200 300 views something like that even then i had never seen that much popularity before so it was at the time it was pretty big for me and um i met some really good friends from that video um youtubers that i still know today such as soda express studios and train kid studios and two blue tender engines I first met them because they commented on my videos and eventually i would just join their streams, we would talk, and then we'd talk some more, and then we'd talk some more, and we've remained really good friends to this day. We've had a firm friend group, but anyway, so this was my first big, um, my first big appearance in the Thomas fandom, and so naturally, I kept it going. More protest videos, more drama, and even after the copy YouTuber got terminated, I would I was still looking for more more drama, more protest videos to rally up. So when the so when the uh, copy channel made another channel, I made a video about that. And I just at this time I just really was getting into I was just jumping on the drama bandwagon whenever I could. If there's a if there's a kid who says that trains suck, you know I'm going to be there in the crowd shouting my objections and getting um, attention for it. Um, in summer of 2020, I, don't, I think it was in June, something like that, I reached 100 subscribers. So that was great. And just more uh, drama. And I would also make memes with my friends. Uh... We made this whole, we had this whole Google Slides thing of just memes that we made. Thomas memes, train memes, and of course, memes about drama, because of course we did, because it was drama. But, um, so yeah, 2020 carries on, because pandemic still exists. We got all this time, and we're still making drama, still making memes, still joining streams, talking to each other, and... As time went on, I started getting more into, like, the, I guess, 
filmmaking side of YouTube. I got, as 2020 went on, I get, I got more interested in just like filmmaking, making my own short films, stuff like that. And some of them still had ties to drama, but, um, yeah, I got more interested in short films. I mean, they were really edgy because of course that's how I was in 2020. I was just edgy, like, Ooh, cool. Scrapyard, spooky, uh, yeah, like that kind of edgy, uh, but I was, I was interested in it a lot at the time, um, and by filmmaking, uh, my filmmaking would kind of pour over into the drama videos, where they became less of rallying up a protest and more sad music over videos of trains, <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, uh, that's kind of what I mean by f how I wanted to be more of a filmmaker. Uh, but, yeah. But eventually, that would get me into the commentary side of things. I stopped, uh, for the first time, I made a video that wasn't necessarily live action. and made a video with a script. I think this was... The first time I ever made a script for a video. Um, it was just a commentary on a Czech train short film, which a fair amount of people knew about even before I made the video about it. So, that worked. But anyway, uh, this became a very influential video. And obviously, because it was my first commentary, it kind of... Um, started something which I continue doing to this day. Just the the whole thing of editing, uh, just narrating myself over uh, video footage with a script and music and stuff like that. I don't, though they didn't have, they might have had music a little bit, but uh, still my editing techniques weren't, I was still figuring out like my editing techniques and stuff back then. But, um, yeah, so I started getting into commentary, and of course, these were all edgy and filmmaky too, but um, I just kept doing those, along with the short films, and along with a little bit of the drama, and I just keep doing that until the end of 2020, and coming into 2021, I wanted 2021 to be like my big year, like this was going to be the year that I was going to make all these epic short films, and they're all going to do well. And uh, so I go into 2021 with that mindset, and I, and I make these short films, and they have all these references. They say a lot about society, and um, just little details. And I put my heart and soul into those uh, short films, or at least I thought I did. I would invest a lot of my free time into them. I would, like make models, because I was, I was really into, like, the live-action miniature aspect of filmmaking. Like, I loved making just, uh, building sets to use for films. That's, um, what I, that's the part of filmmaking that I really was into, and I really thought I was gonna be a filmmaker. Um, so, uh, you'll see how well that went, but, um, for the time, I was uh, confident in what I was doing. And of course, some ideas uh, didn't exactly make it to YouTube. I did have some ideas which I just lost interest in and scrapped partway through. But some ideas did get made. And um, of course, I made sets for them. I would have like, I would make props and things like that. And, um, yeah, I was really dedicated into this. So, yeah, that was what I did for a while. But eventually, I started noticing these short films weren't doing very good. Um, they struggled to break even 100 views. And I was so ticked off to see, like, these videos, which I poured, like, weeks of effort into sometimes, just not doing very good, while somebody else could make some 
and I won't I won't point out any specific individuals here, but I got but just because around the time this was around the time that like all engines go had just been revealed and Sodor Fallout was a big trend. So I was really ticked off to see like somebody could just make a five second Sodor Fallout edit or a five second reboot edit and it gets thousands of views when I make this I make this really long video. I pour I pour out all my heart and soul into it and it hardly gets anything. That's I was really ticked off about that. Until eventually it reached a breaking point where I was just like, you know what? You don't care you don't care about what I do? You don't care about all the dedication I put in for my videos? Fine. I'm going on hiatus. And that's exactly what I did. I went on hiatus for that and several other reasons, some more petty than others. But yeah. Yeah, that's um how it went. That's how well the filmmaking aspect of it went. And in hindsight, I do think that I set my bar way too high. I thought that those videos were going to be a lot more successful than they really were. So I just, in hindsight, it was just overconfidence. And it's okay to be like, it's okay to believe in yourself and want to achieve your goals. But when you set a bar that high like that and get disappointed when it doesn't work out, uh, yeah, maybe then... You might have to rethink your, uh, uh, how do I say this? Rethink your, uh, confidence maybe just rethink stuff like that. But of course I didn't think about that at the time. I was just, uh, ticked off because I felt like I had been dealt a bad hand by the algorithm, which leads me to that hiatus. Now in the hiatus, this is probably the lowest point of my uh, social media life. I was, I was, um, ticked off. I was, um, just jaded, nihilistic, uh, uh, cynical. Cynical would be a good word. I just was not in a very good mental state. And, um, yeah, I just didn't, didn't feel good. And sometimes I would have the occasional spark of motivation to make something, but then I would just go back to that mindset of nobody's going to care. They're all just going to flock back to their trends. Why should I even bother? So that was my mindset um, from April of 2021 through May. That was my mindset, and it was, it was kind of rough. So then I guess you're wondering, how did I get better? Well, um, in late May, early June, I went to the summer camp, um, which I volunteered to work at. I've been to that summer camp many times before, but of course then I just volunteered to work there. I wasn't just uh, a camper there. And I I don't really know what it was. I don't know if it was... I can't pinpoint it on one thing. It was just uh, the support of coworkers, just a break from social media, just being alone with being alone with my thoughts. I don't know, but one way or another, I got better. I started feeling more better mentally, um, and after after all the stuff that had been going on in my mind prior to that, it just felt really good to look at my channel and not worry about how many views is this going to get? How many likes is this going to get compared to this other video? So when I got back to YouTube, uh, for the first time in several months, I wasn't thinking about, will this get popular? Will this be another flop? That wasn't on my mind. And I was just really grateful to genuinely enjoy making YouTube instead of it just being um, being dealt a bad hand by the algorithm or not. And, um, I think that's important. I think that's an important thing, uh, for, for a YouTuber to think about. Just don't, don't try to let the views and the subscribers and the prospect of popularity, uh, control you too much. Cause 
like I said before, can sometimes set yourself up for major disappointment. But anyway, I'm a trained person, it is back, and my mental health is stable again. Uh, yeah. And even after I got back from my hiatus, I still had, I still had creative endeavors that I wanted to do. Some successful, some weren't. But even then, at this point, I finally thought to myself, it's okay if, it's okay if it doesn't go my way. It's okay if it's not as popular. Life carries on. I just, just, um, focus on doing what, um, doing what I like and what people like, what's good, um, not what is popular. That was, I guess, my new mindset. And, um, so eventually, come, I think, July of 2021, I got back, I got back into commentary, and this time, instead of focusing on, um, instead of focusing on train films that a fair amount of people already know about, but I make a video about them anyway, in a very edgy fashion, um, I make videos on very obscure parts of railroad history that aren't really talked about, and yet I find interesting, and I want to shed light on. So that was kind of my goal with commentaries from there on. Find obscure parts of railroad history that I find interesting, and talk about them, and hopefully make them a little more popular than they originally were. And from then on, that was just one of my goals uh, with uh, commentaries and what videos I made. So I made those uh, going into 2020, passing uh, through late 2021. And once again, I wasn't too worried about how popular is this going to be? Um, how many views is it going to make? I wasn't too worried about that as much as I used to be, of course. And gradually... I started, um, I gradually started getting more and more attention until finally I made a video about the Thomas Creator Collective, which was, if you don't know, basically a big collaboration among, uh, YouTubers in the Thomas fandom alongside Mattel, who, uh, owns Thomas. And, um, initially when I made that video, it was just the next video in line that I thought interesting and I wanted to make a video about. Um, not really set up for, set up for greatness. Not, uh, it was just the next video that I wanted to make. And yet, uh, <laughs> in a matter of weeks, that video became huge. And it really, it was kind of a, a groundbreaking thing. It was my First video to reach 5,000 views. First video to reach 10,000 views. Um, it was a big deal. Of course, I wasn't... Of course, it was nice to have that all that new attention. And I'm glad that a video like the TCC got big instead of one of my stupid, edgy films. Because while the stupid, edgy protest films were just like... They were connected to drama and just... A not very good side of my channel where I was still, uh, I still had a lot to figure out. Something like the TCC, it had a, it had a nice message of just, um, this community, we've been able to do good things in the past. We should be able to keep doing those together. And I'm glad that people were taking note of that because I still think that's something that people should know with everything with all the stuff that's going on today, and not just with um, Thomas, just with the world, it's important that we, um, uh, I guess, just work together, something like that. But anyway, yeah, that became a huge video. Um, and by late 2021, uh, I think, yeah, around December 2021, I reached 500 subscribers, and I got a community tab, yay! Uh, so now I can post announcements and stuff. So that was great. And by the end of 2021, I 
I guess you could say I did reach my goal that I had at the beginning of the year, which was um, have 2021 be my year. Uh, it might have been in a very roundabout way, but that I did achieve that goal. 2021 was a big year for me um, in good ways and bad ways. So that was nice. So for 2022, what goals did I have for 2022? Well, uh, one goal that I had for 2022 at the time was more rail fanning stuff. Rail fanning, the thing about rail fanning is, I don't know, the YouTube algorithm doesn't really seem to like rail fanning videos. I don't know if it's the algorithm or demand or what, but rail fanning content just doesn't get that big. And I don't know if it's just me or not, but um, yeah, I don't know if rail fanning is really a popular thing on YouTube. I mean, sometimes it is, but most of the time it can be a bit more uh, unpopular. I don't know. But I wanted to do rail fanning because it's something that I really enjoyed doing. And it was just a nice hobby. It didn't uh, really require uh, weeks of production or overthinking or things like that. I could just film some trains. Um and just document what I caught on YouTube. So, yeah, I just wanted to do more rail fanning stuff, which I kind of did. I've kind of done some rail fanning stuff. Not as much as I hoped to at the time, but... Oh, well, I still did a little bit of it. And besides rail fanning, I just wanted to focus more on real railroading, more so than Thomas, because the thing is... I still like Thomas. I still watch the episodes, collect the merchandise, watch um, fan content. But the thing is with Thomas, it's just... I And this isn't about me just quote-unquote growing up. Um, but I've just preferred real railroading over Thomas. And I'm not one of those guys, but it's just a personal thing. I just prefer doing model railroading and rail fanning than Thomas. I just, I just feel like I get more out of it. It just, it's, it's, um, just more enjoyable of a hobby for me. And it also kind of just boils down to, um, once again, the algorithm, because it feels like, kind of it is just feels like, would I rather do something that I really like to do, but it's not as popular in the algorithm, or I kind of like to do it, I still do, but not as much, yet it gets a lot bigger in the algorithm. It Part of it is just that, just um, popularity uh, view-wise. So that was kind of um, the thing with Thomas versus Railroads. And um, I still do that, where I have, I do more... Uh, railroad content that I do Thomas content. I still enjoy Thomas by all means, but I just uh, feel like I get more out of railroading. No offense to anybody in the Thomas fandom. I still, you still do what you want. This was just my own preference and that's, I still go by that and I might make Thomas videos from time to time. I just, like I said, I just get more out of um, railroading. So, continuing in 2022, that's what I did. Railroading. Um, bit of rail, rail fanning here and there. Uh, commentaries uh, about obscure stuff. Um, with 2022, the pandemic was dying down finally, so I went to train shows. And this was the first time I had gone to train shows since, like, uh, the very early days of my channel. Like, um, when I was still filming on an iPod. Because I film on an iPhone now. Um, I make all my videos on a phone now, but I, back in the days when I filmed on an iPod with the low quality camera, um, went to train shows, but that was the last time I had gone to train shows before COVID shut everything down. And by 2022, the train shows were back and I finally made videos about those. And then I, of course, then I had them with better editing, better thumbnails, um, just things like that. But of course, um, as 2022 carried on, I made more 
uh, commentary videos. Uh, that was the main thing. And the thing about the commentary videos is that a lot of my inspiration uh, comes from a YouTuber known as Emplemon. You probably have heard of him. And I have had several people make the connection, but a lot of like my editing style and my music choice is inspired by Emplemon's content. And um, so yeah, some people have caught on that, but yeah, Emplement's pretty much one of my biggest inspirations when it comes to commentary videos. Uh, that's where I get a lot of this style from. A lot of the style that I do comes from him. So, yeah, there's that. And um, as we get closer and closer into the present, I just made some more real fending content. A little bit of real fending content. Um, not much. Uh, maybe a few meme posts here and there, but still mostly commentary. And I've wanted to do, like, commentaries. I've wanted to try out longer, longer run times with more sophisticated editing. I just want to try to better myself with um, new videos and new commentaries, just with uh, just more in-depth uh, and just more detail, stuff like that. Just to have the end result be better and more, I guess, informative. Uh, better to watch, stuff like that. But um, eventually, uh, we get to uh, August, September. Um, and I've one event, one obscure event in railroad history that I wanted to do was how the big boys got delivered from Alco. Because I figured locomotive deliveries are hardly talked about very much. Not many people talk about how the SP Daylights got from Lima to Southern Pacific. Or how the Frisco Meteors got from Baldwin to Frisco. Or how the big boys got from Alco to the Union Pacific. Just locomotive deliveries in general are just a very obscure yet very interesting topic to me. So I figured I'd make a video about the big boys, of course, being one of the most famous locomotives in the world, uh, and one of the biggest, of course. So I would make, I made a video about the big boys and how they got from Alco, and yeah, kind of like the TCC, it's just the next video online. It's, I'm not worried about view count. It's not like it's going to get that. Yeah, it, 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 it got pretty big. Um, so, yeah, around the time that I made the big boy video, I was at uh, around a little over 950 subscribers, um, just about to get to 1,000. And then the big boy video came along, and I got that final push. The final big, great big push to 1,000. I did it. I finally did it. 1,000 subscribers. Um, and it was thanks... Um, well, not just thanks to the big boy video, but just to a lot of things. Uh, once again, I can't really pinpoint a single thing, though I guess the big boy's video might have been a pre pretty big con contribution. Um, now, the same... It's nice, I'm kind of mixed on my thoughts about the big boy video and just my newfound popularity. I am glad, kind of like the TCC video, I am glad that it's um, a really big video. Because now, I've pretty much achieved my goal. I've made something obscure, well known. I've, um, in that regard, I've completed... Um, I guess that mission, whatever, however you want to say it, I've reached my goal in that regard. Of course, there's a lot more, there are many more obscure railroad topics out there, which I might make a video about one day, but, um, part of me, I am, and I'm also glad that I reached a thousand subscribers finally, finally glad that I just got myself out there and just made it to a thousand, because... 
I'm not too worried about getting to a million or a hundred thousand. I'm just comfortable with a thousand, two thousand, because I am almost to two thousand now. Thank you all for that. Um, yeah, I'm glad that I'm at a thousand, but at the same time, I don't want to take it too far because, ironically, um, back during my hiatus, back during my hiatus, there was a whole thing of, um, I had been on YouTube for two and a half years and I hadn't even reached 400 subscribers by that time. Um, but back then I just thought that the algorithm had dealt me a bad hand and that I was just, just doomed to obscurity, something like that. So it's kind of ironic that now my newfound popularity has come thanks to the algorithm. I mean, part of it might have been an influence on my part, working my way up, but um, part of it was also, part of the popularity was also out of my control. Like, the TCC video got huge thanks to the algorithm, and the big boy video got huge thanks to the algorithm. I mean, sure, my my initial popularity might have had some, a little bit to do with it, but it was the algorithm that mostly got it to the popularity is now. So I don't want to, I, I guess I just don't want to um, think about it. I guess I just don't want to take it to my head too much because it was, part of it was just luck, I guess. I mean, that could have, that video could have been anything. It could have been any video out there. And yet it just happened to be that video. I guess it was just because it was Big Boy and Big Boy's popular. I don't know. But it just happened to be that video. And I am I am still very grateful for that. Thank you so much to everyone who has supported that video and just my channel. But um, at the same time, I just... Um, I guess I just um, want want it to be like business as usual on this channel. I still just want to make um the videos that I have been making like um more commentaries, the occasional rail fanning video, just things like that. Have it just be business as usual because like I said the popularity was partially just luck and I just don't want to take it to my head too much. I just want things to be kind of how they were. And hopefully that newfound popularity I have, I can use to make even more obscure railroad topics popular. And yeah, I guess use my uh, newfound power for good. Because the thing is with that, when you have such a big influence, that's the nice thing about YouTube. And I've talked about this before. That's the nice thing about YouTube. I don't know how many people would normally listen to some teenager from the Midwest making train videos in his basement, but thanks to YouTube, um, that Midwestern teenager can get big. And, of course, I don't always make strict, formal commentary videos. I've made just, like I said, I've just made meme stuff from time to time, just messing around with model trains, um, things like that, so I do try to, uh, have the, uh, I guess balance, I don't know, but, um, I guess where to go from here, uh, I'm not entirely sure, because sometimes I just don't know what video to do next, and obviously it can sometimes be hard, um, getting videos out with, like, school, and part-time job, just things like that can make it harder to upload as much. But I don't think that I'll quit anytime soon. I still want to make YouTube videos. I still think it's nice. Um, I just, it's just sometimes hard to find the time and what you want to talk about. I guess that's, that's it. So, um, here we are, present day. And I do have some ideas for what I want to do next, but I don't know 
if they would, I don't know how many of them will come into fruition, because some of them might be very far in the future, I don't know, but um, whatever happens next, thank you everyone for sticking around, and despite such a uh, flawed, such a flawed uh, trip, such a, so many bad decisions on my part, um, thank you everyone for sticking around, despite all that, so... I guess um, that's about it. Thanks, everyone. But I shouldn't make it so emotional, because, I mean, it'll still be business as usual. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. And by the time this is over, I'll still have plenty to say that I forgot to say on camera. So, uh, yeah. Yeah.